The Neanderthals. Early human evolution occurred at the 10th parallel in Africa. It's easy to see why. It's the only place in the world that has the landmass to do so, and it was savanna country. Homo erectus was the predecessor of Homo sapiens. Two million years ago, Homo erectus evolved on the African savannas. Less than 10,000 years after that, one group made its home in the Caucasus Mountains of Western Asia. The site was unearthed near Dimanisi of the Georgia Republic. Then, about a million years ago, the savanna of the 10th parallel was probably the place of an evolutionary upgrade, and this time its name was Homo heidelbergensis. This species probably evolved from the homebodies who originally stayed put. Heidelbergensis seemed more than an erectus in brain size, but less than a sapiens. In other words, was it an advanced erectus ready to make the leap to sapiens, or was it just marginally sapiens? Then again, it could have been a different species altogether. A satisfactory answer has been found by examining its middle meningeal artery. This meningeal artery presses against the inside of the parietal bone of the skull. Its function is to make the brain vascular, and the larger and more complex the artery is, the more blood circulates to the brain. More blood, oxygen, and nutrients to the brain are good. One of the roles of the meningeal artery is to regulate the temperature of the brain. Homo erectus had a relatively simple artery that was not as large or complex as sapiens meningeals. Anatomists can measure erectus meningeal arteries from the imprints these arteries left on the inside of the parietals. From Heidelbergensis meningeals, it appears that this species was erectus. Heidelbergensis was active and highly mobile and soon made contact with the Demonisi clans who straddled the Asian and European frontier. Interbreeding was inevitable, and soon a hybrid species colonized all of Europe, albeit thinly scattered, including the British Isles. As usual, environment and climate cultivated and styled gene expression until a familiar face began to emerge, that of Homo neanderthalensis. Another group moved east from the Caucasus Mountains and evolved into the Denisovans, the eastern siblings of the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals were the product of the hybridization of two erectus populations. The lack of complexity of both erectus middle meningeal arteries show this. Regardless, Neanderthals must have undergone an evolutionary surge while in Europe because they began to show the physical traits of modern humans, such as a rounded occipital region of the skull and a complex meningeal artery. Neanderthals may not have been sapiens, but they were no longer erectus either. The 400,000-year-old Swanscombe woman of England is a shocker. Even though the Natural History Museum of England classifies the specimen as Neanderthal, its meningeal artery was as significant and as complex as sapiens. How did that happen? Its meningeal and rounded occipital rule out an erectus grade. The occipital lobes and the cerebellum are sapiens in configuration. One possibility is that Swanscombe woman was an archaic Homo sapiens, perhaps just at the species threshold. The other possibility is just as eye-opening. A 2017 CT scan of a seven-year-old Neanderthal skull and spinal column revealed jaw-dropping information. Its brain had only reached 87.5% of its adult size compared to a seven-year-old Homo sapiens brain reaching 95% of adult size. In humans, that last 5% is all about cognition, and it takes until our early 20s to finish growth. By the looks of it, it may have taken Neanderthals longer to reach peak intelligence, ending up with a higher average intelligence than Homo sapiens. Think about chimpanzees. Their brain reaches 90% of adult size at four years old, while humans achieve the same at five years old. Neanderthal population hubs were in Northwest Europe. In addition, certain vertebrae had not yet fused in the young Neanderthal's backbone, 
where it would have fused in a Homo sapiens by age five. And there seems to be another questionable issue. That issue is the claim that the Mongolian race inherited their cold and altitude adaptations from the Denisovans. Australoids also possess Denisovan genetics, but they do not share the same adaptations. In cold or high altitude, Mongolian metabolism increases dramatically with the limbs and extremities receiving great amounts of blood. Australoid cold adaptation, however, is almost the opposite. They experience peripheral vasoconstriction to conserve heat in a body trunk. This matches the less efficient Caucasian cold adaption. Australoids and Caucasians are not altitude adapted. Only the Mongolian race can give live birth atop the Andean and Tibetan plateaus. Altitude and cold adaption in Mongolians must have occurred when they were already in Asia at the erectus grade on the Mongolian and, and Tibetan plateaus. The third fallacy about Neanderthals is that they were short and squat. Back in the late 1970s and early 80s, there were old dusty anthropology books in the libraries. They disappeared by now. But I remember reading one that said Neanderthals were about a half inch taller than their Cro-Magnon contemporaries. I wish I could find those books again. All that information vanished and now we're relearning it as cutting edge findings. The question now begs, did Homo sapiens first evolve in Europe, then spread worldwide, or did they evolve in Africa at a much earlier time, then migrate north? Swanscombe seems to be the oldest sapiens discovery anywhere. Maybe there's something to it. Vast, harsh expanses, waterways, and mountain ranges separated sparse clans, and because of this, it's no wonder that Homo sapiens evolved in isolation. And what happened to the Neanderthals? That isn't difficult to answer. Like all hunter-gatherers, Neanderthals and sapien tribes were territorial, violent, and bloody. There was killing on both sides. However, the biological drive to diversify their genetics, the biological caution to avoid inbreeding, motivated Neanderthals and sapiens to mate and hybridize. Sapiens probably greatly outnumbered Neanderthals and were prolific breeders. Homo sapiens inundated Europe. And it appears, all Caucasian and Mongolians carry the genes of their Neanderthal and Denisovan cousins. See you next time.